Good morning, everybody. Right, let me start by saying, I'm not angry. I'm not upset. I am just disappointed. Like your dad, when you've done something and your mum's gonna tell him to talk to you about it. I'm disappointed. Why am I disappointed? Well, I'm disappointed because for me, and I know there'll be lots of people that disagree, this was an opportunity to really um, get ourselves into uh, a good position for some kind of silverware, albeit the League Cup. And I know there's lots of people that go, League Cup, Tim Pot, ain't worth work. Forget it. This is a club that is starved, absolutely starved of any kind of um, success. And people are turning their noses up at a competition that potentially you could, you know, go quite far in. Now, it's not easy. I don't think it's easy. I looked at the stats since the last time Tottenham won it. Man United have won it uh, three times, I think. Liverpool have won it twice. Chelsea have won it once. And Man City have won it six times. So it's never going to be easy, is it? Because the top teams, those that spend all the money, generally win it. Now, there are a couple of exceptions. You've got a Birmingham in there and you've got a Swansea in there. Okay, so potentially there is an opportunity for somebody else to sneak in there. You only need a, a you know, someone else to do your favour with with someone like Man City, and then we all know that Chelsea, Man United, and Liverpool are not playing uh, their best football, albeit they turn up and play really good against us. Anyway, um, so there is an opportunity in there to to actually progress and, and try to try to pick up some kind of silverware because you've got to start somewhere so that's why that's why I'm I'm disappointed I, you know that's why I'm disappointed I think the second thing to say is you cannot take away the performance of Nottingham Forest and I know I talk about Spurs and I don't normally talk about other teams performances or, or, or review how they get on that's not really for me to talk about that's for their fans to talk about but I think in this situation, you have to say, Nottingham Forest absolutely deserved to win that game. They were on fire. They uh, were pressing, They were their passing was sharp, they were um, challenging for everything, not giving it up. And if it wasn't for Fraser Forrester, actually saving about two or three shots, I think, you know, in a row, we, you know, this could have been a lot, lot worse, a lot, lot more embarrassing than it actually ends up. And I'm not saying it's embarrassing because we lost to Forest, but embarrassing because of the, of the score that we could have ended up going down to. So I think it's, I think it's only fair to say, you know, Forest, you know, they, they deserved it. And you can't deny that. And, and you have to accept that they were in the position... Um, to, to take it, to, to take all the uh, all the glory at the end, and fair play to them. But what I, for me, this is about Tottenham, right? So I, I'm absolutely concerned about the lack of passion that seems to be going through this team at the moment. Now. I think Conte hinted that this is about tiredness and about the pressure of the games that we've got one after the other and all the rest of it. And yeah, and I understand that. And that's why we need some depth in this squad because, quite frankly, the team we put out was a strong team. They're all first-team players in that team. They're all players that we see week in, week out, pretty much. Um, but they're not prepared to turn up. And, and you can say, OK... Let's look at a few of them. Harry Kane. Harry Kane looks tired. I, I, I agree. Harry Kane looks tired. You know, he's he's run himself. He's been carrying the team pretty much, scoring goals in, in games where we've just had nothing. So, I get it. Harry Kane, maybe. And then you've got um, players coming back from injury. Benton Corr, Richarlison, Kulazewski, all coming back from from injury. 
But Matt Doherty hasn't played lots of games, so he shouldn't be tired. And Sessegnon hasn't played all the games. He's being rotated, so he shouldn't be tired. Sanchez, he's another one. He's not been playing all the games, so he shouldn't be tired. So, tiredness in, in relation to those players, I won't, I'm not having it. I, I don't accept that. Hoiberg, yeah, plays every game and all the rest of it. And again, for me, he's the only one in the team who's showing any kind of leadership, any kind of desire um, to, to, to actually take us anywhere. So, him coming off for me was a, was was a big deal. I, I, I honestly felt that we become ranshackled and all over the place once it once he kind of left the field. But I have to, you know, when you're saying, that, you know, if I'm saying that these guys aren't tired, then what's the problem? And I have to say, Sessignon, is that kid ever gonna really kick on? We saw he was on fire for, for Fulham. You know, he was playing out of his skin, and that's what pushed us to, to buy him. We bought him, didn't really start, off he goes to um, on loan. But since he's come back, for me, he's not progressed. And, and you know, I, I hate just pointing at players and saying, not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. But at some point, you kind of gonna have to accept and stop being so uh, accepting that some players need replacing. Absolutely need replacing. So when your opportunity to not have Emerson, who's everybody's kicking boy at the moment in the team, and you, you've you got a chance of bringing on a bright new star who used to play for this team, and you go for Matt Doherty, I, 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 don't, I honestly don't get that. And Matt, to be fair, again, did nothing. He was... He was Ineffective, I guess is the word. For the first goal, you, you know, he's out of position. The ball comes through. Sanchez is like a statue, getting turned left, right, and centre, and curls the ball into into the into the right hand corner. Forrest has got no option on that. And then the second one, when they're pushing on because they've got a goal, they can smell blood. Again, we're all over the place. And comical defending. No one's near. No one's near um, Lingard, and it's an easy header. You know, back across the box. So, you know, Dia and Sanchez together. He's just asking for trouble, and with without any kind of protection in the middle, they just seem to. Well, they just seem so accident prone and and weak, and the whole team. Going into challenges and stuff like that. How many times are our players going to fall over and wave their hands in the air like, oh, this is a foul ref, and not get it? You know, you've got to be stronger, for God's sake. You know, this this doesn't work. We've seen it time and time again with players falling over and all the rest of it. Yeah, OK, it's a, it's, it's a weak game now, and lots of people get... get um, fouled and, and you get fouls for, for lots of stuff these days that you, you maybe never got before. But you've got to be strong enough to ride some of this stuff because you're not going to get it every time and we're seeing it more and more and more where our players are going down far, far, far too easily. So, you know, one more game before the international break, before the before the World Cup, and and to be fair, I think we could do with it. We we really need a break. We really need a reset. We really need a January transfer window to actually um, start to give us an opportunity to compete because the, the depth of this squad is so poor that absolutely we have absolutely no chance of uh, of competing in in any kind of level. The games come thick and fast. And if you wanna, if you wanna be a top club, you're gonna wanna have to play in all these competitions. So, Mr. Levy, you need to get your checkbook out, and you need to give your manager the backing that he deserves. Up the Spurs.